Welcome to Brain Secrets in the Age of the Brain. The science of brain function has uncovered amazing informational bits about the human brain. I like to call them brain secrets, and I love to share them. Asia Hudson, assistant producer of Brain Secrets, along with videographer Grant Gilmore, have been interviewing people in New York City and they have brought back more questions for this Ask Dr. Taylor segment of Brain Secrets. I can hardly wait. Welcome back to Brain Secrets on this side of the camera, Asia. I'm getting used to it. Oh, I'm so glad. I have I love New York. I've been there many times. I'm sure I told you that at some point in our discussions. Mm -hmm. But it's a bustling, busy city. Right. And how did that translate to asking questions of people in the street? Well, it was actually a really good time, especially the first night. A lot of people were so interested in getting questions from us, then we were like, okay, let's keep doing it. Let's try a second night and see if people are as interested. And for me, it kind of became a game because people in New York, they are known for being on the go. They always have some place to be. And so it was kind of like, hey, you, you know? And so it was kind of like a good time for me to try to get people to stop and get them to answer uh, a question. <laughs> That's wonderful. So how did you feel in New York overall doing this? Because you've done it in a lot of places now. Right, so I had the most anxiety going to New York out of any city, of course. Um, it's just so big and everything feels so like rush, you know what I mean? So once I got into the groove of it, I started feeling very comfortable and because I've done this so many times at this point, the rejection doesn't get to me as much unless it's just like somebody really going out of their way to hurt my feelings, which didn't happen, so it's great. Well. There's so much we could talk about rejection mm -hmm. because it's really more about the other person than about you. And they may have, they may be having a bad day. They may really be in a hurry. They may be too introverted to want to talk to a stranger. Mm -hmm. And so when they walk on by, it's really important to understand that not everybody is going to like this and that's okay. Yeah. And I think you're learning to do that, which, which makes it more relaxing and fun for you. Absolutely. So how many questions do we have for this time? We have seven? Seven questions. All right. Okay. <laughs> so is there anything else you want to say before we uh, ask Grant if he's ready to roll the tape? Not that I can think of. Or maybe he's not rolling the tape. What are you rolling when I say, are you, are you ready, Grant, to roll what? We got the laptop set up. You got the laptop set up. All right, let's do this. y'all my name is asia hudson and welcome to another episode of ask dr taylor where we take to the streets and ask random people questions about brain function and then you know the drill we take those questions and we send them back to the desk of our world-renowned brain function specialist dr arlene art taylor phd 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 today tonight we are in Times Square. Yes, I'm in the same outfit that I was the last time we were in the city of New York, but that's because it's really cold and I only brought one outfit of warm stuff. So I'm in this again. As I said, we are at Times Square, Times Square, the official Times Square. Let's see what kind of questions we can get from this creative space. All right, and here we go. If you could ask a brain function specialist a question about brain function, what would you ask her? What makes us different? Okay. Like our brains? Yes. Yeah, great question. What makes our brains different? 
Yeah, what, what makes other people smarter than others? Oh yeah, definitely. I am very smart. Well, the short answer is a combination of genetics and epigenetics, including lifestyle and every choice you make, negative or positive. Each brain is different to begin with and becomes more so throughout life as no two brains ever think identical thoughts and every thought you think changes your brain. There's a difference between being IQ smart, often thought of as book learning, and being EQ wise, learning from life experiences. Brains are believed each to start out with an IQ range that the average person typically can raise between 5 and 30 points depending on where they start. Emotional intelligence, or EQ, is learned, not inherited. High EQ skills can minimize or avoid conflict, which can help you live smarter and wiser and is believed worth 80% of your overall success in life. Did you have a question? What's your question? Yeah, it's good, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay, okay, well, thanks so much, y'all, all right. Nice to meet you, too. I have a question, Dr. Taylor. How does the energy of a city impact other people within that city so in new york everybody's always you know ripping and running moving and grooving and there's always this constant feeling of having to go and i'm wondering um how long does it take to get acclimated to something like that if you're new to the city and how pervasive is that in how it impacts communities yeah okay congrats do my thing <laughs> Well, no surprise, it varies depending on the individual, their mindset, and the circumstances. It helps to plan ahead, expect the unexpected, be open-minded and ask for help if you need it. Studies in China have shown that it is easier for Southerners to adapt to heated homes in the North than it is for Northerners to adapt to unheated homes in the South. Although most people seem to just wear warmer clothing and let it go at that. Those who decide to accept taking cabs or the underground or the L in New York rather than complaining about no longer owning two cars tend to acclimate much more easily taking classes to learn a new language, rather than choosing to live in an area where other immigrants speak your language, can provide more opportunities for interactions. How would your becoming acclimated impact the mindset of surrounding communities? It wouldn't, in my brain's opinion. My guess is that those who do not particularly thrive on a daily diet of hustle and bustle, museums, Broadway plays, concerts, and perceived crowded living spaces, would select a surrounding community independent of the person who is acclimating to the culture of New York City, the Big Apple. You know what a day job is? She does, yeah. Between information getting from the left eye to the brain from the right eye getting to the brain. So the information in the left eye gets to the brain before the left information from the right eye gets to the brain. And in your mind, it interprets it as a as as it's it already happened, but really it's just the, the eye seeing it, you know what I'm saying, before the right eye sees it. I love that. Okay, Dr. Taylor, we're gonna need to know the research on that. That's a great perspective. I've never heard that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, Appreciate maybe you should be a brain function specialist. <laughs> well, that's a great question. It alludes to one of the several deja vu theories based on studies that indicate sensory processing does not always work perfectly. A brief electrical malfunction can occur that impacts the speed at which sensory data arrive at one or more decoding centers. 
sensory integration dysfunction is one example. Another theory says that sometimes short-term memories take a shortcut into long-term memory storage making you feel as if you're retrieving a long ago memory rather than something that happened in the last few seconds. In an unimpaired brain, although the right hemisphere directs much of what happens on the left side of the body and vice versa, the eyes are an exception. The average human has two eyes and two optic nerves that meet at the optic chiasma, centrally located in the brain. At this neuronal junction, the two optic nerves split into four so that both halves of the brain receive information from each eye. Typically, messages arrive at the decoding centers in the occipital lobes simultaneously. Scientists may never figure out what causes deja vu in a specific individual brain because each brain is different. If you could ask a brain function specialist a question about brain function, what would you ask her? What is the best way to um, retain memory? <laughs> That's another good question. I suppose the shortest answer is this. Use it or lose it. Some forms of dementia are simply believed to be triggered by a lazy brain. Studies suggest that the brain needs at least 30 minutes of challenging brain stimulation every day. Unfortunately, watching the average TV program, movie, or social media site provides passive brain stimulation. It simply processes what another brain has actively created. This differs from watching something that requires the brain to actively and interactively process the information. Prevention is key, as cure, if one even exists, may not be effective. However, I always say you are never too old to learn healthier prevention strategies given that the brain is not already descended into dementia. And sooner is better than later. For starters, give your brain the sleep it needs. Sleep deprivation is independently linked with lifespan and with memory. Keeping your brain well hydrated with water, because dehydration is a known risk factor for dementia. Healthy nutrition. Avoiding refined and processed foods and products made with white flour, sugar, and fat. Staying active physically and mentally. Hanging out with healthy, wise friends. Um, so actually, Dr. Taylor, I have a really good memory, and I'll prove it to you right now. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Wait, let me remember what I'm trying to remember so I can prove to you I have a good memory. Oh, okay, so we're staring, we're staying at an Airbnb out here, and I remember the Wi-Fi <laughs> password. Oh, it's boy. zone 4384-5712 Jet. Why am I so good at memorizing that Wi-Fi password? And how do you build memory? That's a great question. When I was younger, my dad would always play like memory games with us. When I first had my first smartphone, I would play like, where is the card? Match the cards to where you saw the cards last. Yeah, what are some other ways that you can expand and retain memory? Yeah, we'll see about it. When we see you in person. That's Here we go. Huh? What? I said that's not the Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes, it is. No, you missed the tar. Yeah, you're right. You are such a hater. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think you just answered your own question. Some brains simply are better at rote memorization than others. In addition, you grew up practicing games that enhance one's memory. What else can you do? How much time do you have? Get physical and mental exercise every day. 
give your brain the sleep it needs so it moves information from short into long-term memory. Tie the new information to something you already know. Read the information aloud. So it comes to your brain in more than one sensory system. Learn to play a musical instrument. Play challenging mental games such as chess and so on. All right. So the question is, if you could ask a brain function specialist any question about brain function, what would you ask her? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> no problem. No, seriously, I don't know. Okay, do My you? My is not functioning real right now. Okay, no worries. It's because it's cold, huh? Right. Not really. Oh. I'm just excited. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> and then? Man, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I really don't even know what to ask. This I'm just excited because this is my first time here. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So, Yay. so hey. <laughs> How can excitement make us lost for words? That's a question. That's a good question. Yeah, wow, <laughs> look at him. He did a good job. <laughs> All right, thank y'all so much. That was awesome. <laughs> Have fun. Now that is a tricky question. Some theorize that sudden or excessive excitement can create a type of anxiety in the brain as it tries to figure out what the excitement really means. Until it figures that out, it is unsure what to say, so it says nothing. <laughs> Sometimes a very good choice. No doubt you've seen people accepting an unexpected award and be at a complete loss for words finally stumbling out, this is such a surprise, thank you. And that's about all they can manage to get out, coherently. If you could ask a brain function specialist any question about brain function, what would you ask her? How much percent does do like normal people use of their brain? <laughs> okay, he was ready with that one. Yeah, like people don't know, you don't use as much of your brain as you think you do, you know? How much of your brain do you think you use? Depends. If I'm like studying, probably like 10%. If I'm going for some chicks, probably like 90%. Chicks? Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. And that's it. Okay. Dr. Taylor, studying 10%. Going for chicks and the ladies, 90%. Sounds like a solid ratio to me. All right. And we're wrapping it up. You know, you may be thinking of that old estimate that human beings tend to use only 10% of their brain. What we do know is that that old 10% guesstimate is a 100% myth. Brain researchers estimate that during an average day, humans use nearly 100% of their brains. Portions of the brain never sleep, you know. And some parts work even harder while you sleep than when you are awake. About the only time there would be unused portions of the brain would be due to serious injury or brain damage or perhaps when the individual brain was zoned out in a drug haze. Whether the brain is being used for work or study or chasing chicks, uh, and other meaningful activities, however, is a completely different issue. And that is it for another episode of Ask Dr. Taylor. We took to the streets of New York and we are in Times Square. We got a bunch of phenomenal questions from this city. Every time we travel to a city for this show, I love each city more and more. And it has been a wonderful journey today. Dr. Taylor, I'm excited to see what you have to say about all of these wonderful questions that we received on this very chilly night in New York. Well, there's another one under our belts, yeah. if, if we wore belts. <laughs> so where else would you like to go? What, what's next on your agenda? You're always surprising me, but I thought I'd at least ask. Do you have a favorite place you want to go? Well, Grant and I have something in mind, but we're going to keep it as a surprise. Oh, boy. <laughs> I right. promise you'll love it. Good. Well, thanks again for your hard work because I know it's work. Although it's fun, it is also work. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, our viewers, for watching. 
I really enjoy sharing information about the brain. The more you know about the brain, where everything begins, the better you can use it by design. That's another brain secret.